Hey everybody, welcome back to Fawen Channel with Fawen's own friends featuring Fawen. And Micro, hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Avocat Voliere. Which is French for Aviar Attorney. We just looked that up on Google <laughs> Translate. <laughs> so, um, real quick before we start today, uh, I, I did not notice this when I was recording the other few episodes, but anytime that there is a cutscene, it seems to like really like stutter and skip and I couldn't tell you why because for some reason it seems to happen as it records it so we're trying a different recording method this time around to see if it's better so I don't know what it's going to look like but hopefully it'll be better but we'll see so please just bear with us while we figure this out and so, hopefully we'll figure it out soon as you can see we're at the main menu and that's because uh, this is another recording day so let's let's see if we can figure out what's going on Oh, I'm excited. How about a quick recap, Fawen? Um, well, the last thing I remember is we went to the uh, the library and found out that our Spanish prince is no prince at all. And I made the connection that he's probably Mousy's business partner undercover. It's very interesting, the entire story itself, because we knew that there was something going on about it, but we quite couldn't put our finger on it <laughs> until we went to the Bibliothèque Cachée. I think we should go see, pay Mousy a visit. What do you think? Let's go play Mousy a visit and ask him about this prince of his. Yeah, well, it's a P.I., I'm sure. I'm, I'm totally sure. It has sure to be. It has to be at this point, right? Okay. Yep, yep. Oh, hello again. Hi, Mousy. Is there any sign of Monsieur Vilpes? No, no, not yet. He's still vacationing. In jail. Come back next week. Next ah. week. Okay, this is totally a, uh, uh... Perhaps uh, we can go to jail. Phoenix, no, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney type deal, mm -hmm. where if... Unless you have some sort of evidence to present them, um, you can't catch them in a lie or something like that, okay. even while you're investigating. So okay. we need that extra piece of... <sighs> Information. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think we do have to go to... Uh, La Conciergerie. Yeah. Oh, that's going to take a whole day, It though. is going to take a whole day. But that's where we, we, we need to, to go. It. Yeah. To move the story along, right? I mean, because I think we're kind of low on leads. You again. Business hours are over. Come back later. I have no time for your quibby, monsieur. Stand aside. You can't talk to me like that. I most certainly can. We have reason to believe that you are housing a suspect under false pretense. That is in direct violation of statutes 204B and 488C of the French Criminal Code of Justice. Failure to comply with our request may result in you, yes you, monsieur, being held directly responsible for any consequential legal action. All right, all right. No need to break out the legalese on me. I'll go open the cell. <laughs> legalese, love it. I hate that guy. He, like his his. He's just that gruff guy. You know? Yeah, but his name suits him perfectly. Why is that? Quark. Quark. He's like I don't know. I just. Ugh. I don't know. I hear Quark. I think it's Star Trek. <laughs> the dude on the bar. <laughs> wow, Falcon. How do you memorize those criminal codes? Memorize? Come on, Sparrow. So learn how to bluff. <gasps> I knew it! I knew he was making shit up. I thought he was just being a smarty. Oh, all right, I'm Prince One, right? Yeah. Ah, Senor Falco, it is good to see you again. You have some good news about my case, I hope. Hmm. Come from politely. Yeah, yeah. Let's I not think be that's... angry about this. Let's... Well, I wonder if we come across angry, if he's just gonna drop like the act and be like, oh shit, you know? I'm a polite person, though, Fallon. So are you sometimes. It's so weird because I think if it was Sparrow's in, he would have confront angrily. Yeah. But yeah. I as Falcon, I am probably Probably wants to do polite. I'm just gonna guess right now. I'm gonna do politely, but then Sparrow's just gonna blurt yeah. something out and be like, probably. You you ass, what are you doing? Yep. <laughs> Listen, Juan, in order to maximize our chance of a successful trial, I need to know every bit of information. I can't work with half truths. If you tell me one thing, and the prosecution evidence tells me another, then we're both in trouble. I'm afraid I don't quite follow, senor. Do you want me to spell it out? I know that you are not the Prince of Spain. I know that your name is not Juan Quiriato. Where is this coming from? I assure you, senor, I am who I claim to be. If you want your trial to be a farce, then you don't need my help. Come, Sparrowson, we're leaving. Wait, 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 wait. Calm yourself, Mr. Faco. I'll reveal all. Did you just say, monsieur? What happened to your Spanish accent? Your suspicions are well placed. <laughs> I'm just dropping it. Juan Guirardo is not my real name. I am not Spanish. I'm not a Spanish prince. 
That was just a persona I concocted for the purpose of getting arrested. What? Whoa, he is undercover. So why would you want to get arrested? Yeah. I feel like that's the natural next. No, let's do the, the what's your real name first. Oh, we're going to probably go through all of them, yeah, right? Yeah, no, totally. Okay. So what is your real name? What is, what is it a name? <laughs> it's just an empty label, a vapid reflection of who we really are. Today I'm Juan Quiero, the Prince of Spain. Tomorrow I may be Bruno Rayer, a pauper living under a bridge of the Sien. But that doesn't change who I am or what I do. That really didn't <laughs> answer my question. Yes. No, I suppose <laughs> it didn't. But you're a smart purpose, you're Falcon. I expect that you already know my real name. Yup. You are Renal Volpez, private investigator. Very astute, you and Monsieur Falcon, private defense attorney. But that wasn't your, always your name, was it, Monsieur Falcon? Just like me, you know how to adopt a new persona on a What? Mini. Ooh, what's my real plot name? Plot twist, plot twist. You changed your name, Falcon? I didn't know that. This isn't about me, Juan, Renard, Monsieur. We're trying to uncover the truth here. Of course, so what truth is it that you are attempting to uncover, Monsieur Falcon? Well, screw you, man. Why'd like, you get arrested? <laughs> why, no, like, why are you even joking around with us no, at I this don't, point? I don't think he's joking around. No, 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 I think what he's doing is he's saying that I know your secrets just as well as now you know my secret. I think it's a way of saying, don't blow my cover or else I'll expose you. I don't know. I feel like saying, screw you, I'm not taking your case. You could rot in jail. Because I'm just bitch. tired of this. Yeah. Why would you want to get arrested? Why would you want to get her? I think it's because you're worried it's going to be another dim meow situation. Oh, I hated her. You know how depressed I was after we found, after oh, you, that case you, was you over? Oh, you made it quite clear to her. It was viewers. horrible. Oh. Why would you want to, why would you want to get arrested? Mm. You're putting me in a difficult position, monsieur. If I tell you the full story, I'll be putting someone else in danger. How about this? I'll tell you a story. Oh my gosh. I like stories. There was a girl, a mademoiselle, who was in a great deal of debt. I'm assuming it's the swan, swan. girl whose name I don't remember. Signé. Signé. Everyone has a debt these days, monsieur. Indeed, but this particular mademoiselle was indebted to a very powerful man, and the man wished to collect. The mademoiselle had no means of paying, so the man offered her a deal. Murder this man, and I will forget that what you owed. Refuse, and I will reap what I owe, what I am owed from your parents. With no alternative options, the mademoiselle accepted. But another man, a gallant knight with foolish, archaic notions of chivalry, heard the mademoiselle's story. That's why he gave us Don Quixote. Do you he think that is... he's Don Quixote, or is yes. Mousy Don Quixote? Oh, that's a good point. What if Mousy has a thing for the girl? Yep, I think Mousy has a thing for the girl. I don't know. I mean, there's no way that Mousy could probably pull off a Spanish prince type deal. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. That's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting theory. I like that. The knight knew that murder was inevitable, but he saw a way to take the fall in the mademoiselle's place. Do you understand what I'm saying, monsieur? So you're telling me that you actually did murder the man. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what you're on about. <laughs> I want him to spell this shit out. Yeah. Kind of need it. To be honest, I'm completely lost. That's unfortunate. I thought I made the message fairly clear, but it doesn't matter. Let me give you a piece of advice, Monsieur Falcon. Sometimes the problem doesn't lie with the one on trial. Sometimes the problem lies within oh. the justice system itself. I'm still lost. <laughs> I love it. Me too. Mon dieu, this is hopeless. Why don't we talk about something else? That's all. I don't have any more questions for you, Juan. I think that we've learned all we can for now. Really? I don't feel <laughs> that we've learned very much. I mean, we know his, his actual identity now. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Falcon, before I forget, could you find Mousy and ask him whether the birds have successfully flown See? south for the winter? Well, the birds have flown south? What is that? Some sort of yes, code? Yes, it is. Something like that, but rest assured, monsieur, this is, does, this, that this does not directly pertain to the case. It does directly pertain yeah, to the case. Yeah, it does. That, no, that's what he said. This does pertain to the case. Oh, oh, I thought he said doesn't. I read that wrong. Sorry. Well, if we have time... Well, well if we have time, I'll be sure to let Mousy know. Let's go. Let's make a move, Sparrowson. Trial day is approaching. Right. So yeah, that you know what that code's about? Did the Swan and her parents leave? Yeah. No, I thought. No, I thought. I thought. I thought her parents were dead, and but, she just t she just inherited their debt. No, 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 no. He just said that the ma she was indebted to a man, and he said either I collected from you by you. 
murdering this man, or I collect it from your parents. Oh, I thought and it was just her parents dead. No. Uh, okay. Well, let's go. Let's go check out Mousy real quick. Maybe he'll be able to shed some more light. Falcon, what are you doing? It's trial day. We have a Spanish prince to defend. No, we don't. All right. What was I thinking? Oh, come on. I guess we we're have. I, I, it's time to go to. Okay. Uh, you, we're we, we're not good at this right now. We need to finagle this a little bit. Use a little pizzazz. Wow, the court. Make him call for a two-day recess or something. Yeah. Once again, Falcon and Sparrow find themselves waiting outside the doors of the Tribunal de Grande Instance. Oh, uh, and the opposing lawyer. The cocksure lawyer himself. Is is our rival. Oh. Uh, well, Cocrico. Cocorico. Coco -co -co Rico, something like that. Cock of the walk, mister. Yeah, he thinks he is. Are you feeling nervous, Falcon? We're gonna fucking lose again. <laughs> <laughs> That's my response. <laughs> Just, <laughs> don't go sound on me now. <laughs> we have nothing. We, 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 oh, oh my god. I, just, I love it's still like playing that like stereotypical like Spanish music. Audience, you may not realize this, but as that music comes up, Fawn himself is doing like a tango around the rose. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> How awesome would that be? I'm just imagining it in my mind right uh, now. I'd, I'd pay to see myself do that. <laughs> you paid? You want me to video record it next time? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right, Senor Falcon. I trust everything is in order. Can we just say no? <laughs> Absolutely. I have every intention of bringing the truth to light in this trial. I have such confidence. This, that's magnificent, magnificent to see. And bringing the truth to light, you say, an admiral goal, no more jousting at imaginary giants. All I can see is your yammer and the door is opening. Here we go. Buena suerte, Senor Falcon. We will. Are we ready? We're ready. Oh, <laughs> we are not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready at all. Oh, there he is. There's the asshole himself. Oh, too late. JJ. Wait, was was it me? No, I was it. Was it you? Do you want to be Coco Rico again? Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe it was know. you. What's going on? Let's make it you. So. JJ. Yeah, we'll do it. Severin. Nervous? Why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm as calm as a cuckoo. You're the nervous one. This whole courtroom is nervous. <laughs> Whoa, cool your feathers, Falcon. Hmm, <laughs> terrible. Can we maintain a stoic facade? I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments. But this is how you act before the trial's even started. Why well, you pompous tailed posture perfect? <laughs> oh! That guy. No, 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 no. That was, um... We saw him before. We saw him in a cutscene talking to another wolf about some sort of, like, secret society yep. BS, Illuminati shit, so... Order, order, let's all settle down, court is on session. Ooh, can I actually do it here? Sure. No, no, I want to destroy my voice. You can go ahead. Okay. So it's okay for me to destroy my voice? Mm-hmm. Psst, Falcon. What is it? Is it me or is that primary judge look hairier today? Oh, is this... Oh! He's supposed to be that... that the other one. That other judge. Yep. But... Nope. Oh. Yep. The plot thickens. We're so screwed. That's a different judge to the one who resided over Dame Catalan's trial, you doofus. Oh, still, it's a little strange, isn't it? Not really. I, I mean, don't think so either. There's not one judge who presides of everything, right? That's what, we, that's what we're speculating. I mean, it's... It doesn't make sense, but yeah. No, it, I don't think it's... Although he is fishy, don't get me wrong. Not really. There are dozens of judges in Paris alone. It only, takes, it only makes sense that we see different ones in different cases. Excuse me, Anna. I was under the impression that Judge Maxime would be residing over this case. Where is he? Now it's weird. Judge Maxime is going on temporary sick leave due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. Oh, they rigged this shit. Rest assured, assessors, prosecutor, defense, and members of the jury that I'm more than qualified to know his shoes. I'm wondering... Here's what's weird. We don't know their motive. No. We just know that they're planning something, and it had to do with the crown. Yeah. We don't know how. Do you think our... it's a secret wolf society? Like, oh. and and Juan's in on this? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know if Juan's in on it, but I do know that something's going on here. And I'm not sure if they want to get Juan uh, 
uh, incriminated so they can throw them off whatever plans that they're that have planned okay. or if he actually is in on it and it would be beneficial for him to get off mm -hmm. so I don't know if we really need to defend Ron Ron Juan or if we need to uh, help him get thrown in the slammer I don't well, know I guess we're gonna have to wait and see yeah. how we do here Fawn. so let's do this I'm just like totally lost without further ado let's get the show underway this is the trial of one of Prince Juan Carrido who stands accused of murdering Major Howell and conspiring to murder the king himself. Roll call! The defense is present ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Good, very good. I expect this to be a nice speedy trial. I don't want to see this dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. Well said, Your Honor. I expect that once this court sees the overwhelming evidence, this trial will be over in five minutes. F five minutes? He's just messing with your head, Falcon. Keep it together. We're on the same page. Excellent. Prosecutor, please call your first witness to the stand. Very well. I will call the police and officer investigating the crime scene. I call on Inspector Just Volerti. Maybe I should have been the judge because you're all, you are also Javier. <laughs> Javier coming up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Step up to the stand, Inspector, and recite the oath. Oh, this guy. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Inspector Just Valerti, and I'm a servant of the law, a scourge of the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've all heard your monologue before. Whoa, Cocorico is really going for speed record, isn't he? Now, can you tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th of January? Of course. At 10 o'clock? <laughs> Sorry. At 10 o'clock in the morning, I was called to the Lupus Grand Galier, gal Gallery by one of the King's Royal Guards. Did you just say o'clock? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> there I saw Prince Juan, King Louis Felipe, the corpse of Major Howe with a rose in hand, and about two dozen citizens. The citizens and the king himself all attest to seeing Major Howe taking the rose from Prince Juan's hand and promptly dropping dead. And what did the morgue uncover upon examination of the corpse? The court determined with absolute certainty that Major Howell died of poisoning. Aside from a prick upon the finger, there was no sign of external harm to Major Howell's body. Therefore, the poison rose must have been the cause of death. It's the chocolate. It is totally the chocolate. That's what I think, too. It's the chocolate? Because you shouldn't be giving chocolate to dogs. Everyone yeah, I, I think that's, like, the, the joke. <laughs> Putting the pieces together, does that seem very implicative of the prince? I have no further questions. Damn, I was hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak heart attack or something. How do we not look at that? That would make for a particular speed of trial, wouldn't it? But no, we aren't so lucky. Something else must be amiss in the bird's testimony. Right, I'll tear it apart. Your Honor, I wish to cross-examine the witness. Falcon, was it in? Don't waste the court's time. A high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. I wouldn't accuse the inspector of lying. I just want to make sure that everything... Base is properly covered. Oh, this sounds like a pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it for now. Go on, Falcon, do your cross examination. I'm doing quotes, air quotes right now. <laughs> my my thing is, I think we're not with no, the last case. Honest. I think we could have investigated everything that was underlined. I don't think we can here. Like, if we bring this up, he's just gonna be like, "That was your one chance, and you blew it." Yeah. Two the, dozen citizens. Uh, the, can you look at your evidence box real quick? What do we have? Book. Major Howe took a rose from Prince Juan. One of the roses were supposedly coated in poison. Don Quixote. Chocolate wrapper. I think we... I think once we pick something here, that's when we then link it to one of these yeah, things. Yeah, I want to see what we have to link it to. And then make it I'm going to go with poisoning. I was thinking that too, or the two dozen citizens. Uh, I'm thinking poisoning or Major Howe. Maybe it's the ten o'clock. No, I think that's a red herring. Okay, let's, do, let's go with the poisoning then. Uh, let's do poisoning. Inspector, you say that the coroner determined with certainty that Major Howell was killed by poison. Correct. He stated the signs and symptoms were textbook. There were no, there was is no possibility that death was natural. That's gonna be what kind of poison was it? Yeah, because this one they already it. mentioned it was being pricked on the finger, but mm -hmm. what kind of poison was it? That's a good question. Did the coroner mention specifically what kind of poison it was? He was not certain. At first, the coroner posited that it was plant born poison of that aconite flower. Oh, at first. 
When he learned of how fast the boys came in the vent, he noted this was a typical Vaconite. Consequently, suggests there may have been some newly engineered concoction. A newly engineered poison, you say? Well, that only reaffirms this was a very deliberate assassination attempt. Indeed. Yes, you do. We do have another question about the poison. Yes. Oh! No, we haven't linked it. We haven't linked it yet. How was he poisoned, then? Let's try that one. Because the other, the other option is never mind. Yeah. How was he poisoned? If it's not the flower, what was it? I mean, I think this is our way of saying, like, could it possibly have been ingested? So, yeah. Okay. Let's try it. How exactly was Major Hub poisoned? What was the delivery mechanism? This finger was pricked by the poison rose. He even commented out loud about it before, seconds before dying. All 22 citizens who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. So it ain't possible that he was poisoned by something else. What an absurd thing to ask, JJ. You just heard that 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? That the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning? That's exactly what I'm saying. That's, ex <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't doubt that Major Hell was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievable! Only a buffoon could fail to draw the blatant link here. JJ, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you on the basics of cause and effect, I'll end this discussion painlessly. Inspector, please tell the defense that you found traces of the poison on the thorns of the rose itself. That should alleviate all doubt that the road was, in fact, the poison delivery mechanism. Actually, <laughs> I can't tell him that. Dot, dot, dot. I tried to ask, but why not? We didn't check the rose for trace of poison. It seemed obvious the rose caused the poisoning in the timing of the incident. You didn't... Yep. Didn't dust for prints on the murder weapon, but we're sure he had it. <laughs> well then, now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there's no poison on the rose, then Prince One lives, and he is free to go. If the rose is poisoned, then the prince dies. But that's okay, because the punishment will be just in fitting of the crime. A marvelous suggestion. What, what is this? What is this? A witch trial? This isn't America, Severin. That's not <laughs> how we do things here. I love it. Calm your feathers, JJ. It was clearly a joke. Oh, was it now? There are far more humane ways of testing for poison. I'm sure the inspector will perform his duty with due diligence. Actually, it won't be able to test the rose for poison at all. Why's that? Threw it away. Given the dangerous nature the flower was destroyed by the police force, we burned it to ashes. Oh, you idiots! Oh! Such unprofessionalism. Yeah, right? If we have no way to know whether the bros was poisoned, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. Nice try, JJ, but through the process of reasoning by elimination, we still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. In other words, there's nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused the poisoning. Wrong! There was something else at the crime scene that could have caught, uh, contained the poison. Something the investigative police blindly overlooked. The chocolate! Boom! Look at this. What am I supposed to be looking at? It is the paper wrapper to a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre, the Salle du Tiber to be precise, and we can date its consumption to the date of the incident. You're not suggesting... That Major Hal ate a piece of poisoned chocolate moments before he died. I most certainly am. <gasps> Drink <Guess. pretty> convincing. <gasps> what the? You gained a little favor with it, Jerry. Only a little bit. Did you see this wrapper the crime scene for yourself, Inspector? The police force does not have time nor resources to trawl every piece of trash the crime scene, I'm afraid. In other words, you overlooked it. <laughs> Astounding unprofessionalism. I remember now I was the one who originally did that. <laughs> Go ahead. The prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. You, I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I don't want your apologies. I want you to do your damn job properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish, I'll take my leave. Until next time, Monsieurs. He still has his job. Oh. Wanna do it then? No, 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 it's, it's you. So let me get this straight. This chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene? Correct. And you have no, any of reason to believe it was consumed on the day of the incident? I do. I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who on the earth are you talking about, Falcon? We will find out next time on Fallen Channel and with Fallen and Friends Avery Attorney. No, what was it? Avocado Volier. Avocado. Avocado? Avocado. Avocado. Avocado.
Avocado. Leave out the co- dough. Avocado. Avocado. Oh, we're going to quit at this. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next time. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And tell your friends about us. Yeah, share. We the- love talking to more people. Share the videos out there and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more following channel. We'll see you guys next time. And hopefully we'll figure out what's happening in this trial. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.